then that 50 is definitely an anomaly that needs further investigation because there's got to be a reason. And so you want to try to get to the root cause of why is that happening because there may be a leak or stored water somewhere in that area, sometimes in the exterior wall, could be in the floor or the ceiling. Hello, I'm gonna to talk today about some tools. So I'm gonna do a whole series on the tools that I use and have used to investigate my home, other people's homes, the environment, and some other tools that, that I have used personally. So today we're gonna to talk about humidity monitors. They're also called hygrometers. I'm gonna turn this one on. So these are two different ones. I actually have a third one, which is in another room and I'll discuss a little bit, but this is just, it's just a little bitty uh, humidity monitor. You can get these at almost any store. They're anywhere between nine and 11, $12. I have probably four of them. And um, so you can see here, I don't know if you can read it. It might be flipped. My humidity is only 22% because it's pretty cold and my temperature is 77 degrees and this is in my office. Um, this, this you sit in your counter or a shelf. And then I would put one in several rooms and move them around. You definitely want one in your bathroom or laundry room. And then I would put it in your bedroom, maybe in an office or some other rooms that um, keep an eye on them, keep an eye after it rains. So that's this one. This particular one's an Accurite. This is a, uh, another kind of humidity monitor that's kind of instantaneous. So you can carry it around and the wind kind of goes through. Here, I've used this a lot on our trips to learn about the environments that we're in, which is really interesting and it's been very diverse. Desert environments actually have high humidity sometimes at night and in the morning, like a lot higher than I expected. So this one is showing 23.1 and 76 degrees. So you can see that they're calibrated slightly differently and they're in the same room and they're getting slightly different results. So just know that, you know, within a degree or two or number here and there is probably fine. That's about as good as you're going to get. You want to look for anomalies when you're looking around your building. So say I hit 20, what is this, 22 to 23 degrees in my space right now. And then say I go another room in this house, into another room in this house, and the number is 50. That would be an anomaly. And it would be like, that's strange. Check another room. If that one's also in the 20s, low 20s or mid 20s, then that 50 is definitely an anomaly that needs further investigation because there's got to be a reason. And so you want to try to get to the root cause of why is that happening because there may be a leak or stored water somewhere in that area, sometimes in the exterior wall, could be in the floor or the ceiling, that's raising the humidity as it's trying to dry. So these are two. The third one that I have is like this one, only it does multiple rooms. And there are several different versions that you can use where you can put it in your attic. Keep an eye on your attic versus your house. I have mine in the, in the living room of my home and then I have another one outside and it's hanging under a tree. And that way I can look at the outside and the inside. I can see what the humidity is real time outside to decide if we're gonna open windows or not. Or just to compare and see, okay, well, what is it outside versus inside to make sure that my building is in check. You, also, you always should be drier in your house than it is outside if it's very humid and you should have more moisture in your house if it's really really dry outside uh, especially in the winter so uh, there are a lot of conversations that i've seen lately around humidity and optimal levels i would suggest that it's anywhere between 30 and 50 that's uh, based on my research um, more than 50 sometimes 55 at the absolute most and that would be in some place that's really hot and humid. So definitely, um, and then if it gets really, really cold, if you're in North Dakota or Minnesota or Canada, and it's really cold outside, like a high of zero, or maybe even below zero, below freezing, but you know, really, really cold, you may not even be able to do 30% relative humidity. So uh, I'm running radiant heat, so it's actually really comfortable for me at a lower humidity and um, but at some point when it gets really cold out, we may have to humidify because we don't have many people living in our house anymore. So the breath that we use, the showers we take, 
the cooking that we do all add humidity to the air. And when you don't have many people in a space, you tend to have less humidity added. If you have a lot, you have a lot of little kids running around or a lot of people, teenagers, uh, people working out, dancing, doing whatever, talking, cooking, showering, laundry, those things all add humidity and you want to keep an eye on it. You just want to know what, what different rooms are um, usually at so that you can notice if there's a change. So I hope this is helpful and uh, check out the links for some links to some of the products that I use. Uh, some, some of them are, most of them are affiliate links. So I really appreciate it if you use my links coming in so that it can support the work that I do. Uh, so also check out my online courses. We've got a great moisture basics course we just launched and there's always a building a safe home. I'm really excited about all the things that we're offering because they're great value. They're the kind of information that I tell everyone on consulting calls. They're basics that everybody needs to know to be able to figure out who's the right person to hire for your project, what's the right thing to do as I have done. And, uh, and I wanna help you find the way and show you the way. So check out all those things and I'll see you on the next video. If you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. For more free information on safe building, avoiding mold, and water damage, visit avoidingmold.com.